Today in our 2017 Chevrolet Colorado, you're going to be taking a look at and show you how to install the Kurt Class 3 Trailer Hitch Receiver, part number C13176. That's what our hitch looks like when it's installed. You can see the receiver tube or the end of the receiver tube is nice and flush with the edge of the bumper fascia. <clears throat> we're not going to have to worry about hitting our legs or shins on it when we're walking around the vehicle. You can see a little bit of the cross tube, but not much. Uh, when it's down on the ground, you're not going to be able to see anything. You'd have to be pretty far back behind the vehicle to see that little bit of the cross tube. Uh, so it's not really going to take away from the vehicle at all. This hitch is going to have a nice black powder coat finish that's going to resist any rust or corrosion. It's going to be a class 3 hitch. It's going to be 2 inch by 2 inch. Hitch pin hole is going to be 5 8 inch in diameter. You can see it's going to have plate style safety chain loops. Very large in size, so it's going to fit multiple size safety chain hooks. As far as weight ratings go, you're going to have an 800 pound max tongue weight, which is a downward pressure on the inside of the receiver tube, then an 8,000 pound max trailer weight, which is the trailer plus the load included. I do recommend checking the owner's manual of the vehicle to make sure the vehicle can withstand the amount of weight. You're going to pick the lowest number between the vehicle and the hitch. Now, this hitch is weighted for weight distribution. Tongue weight's going to go up to 1,000 pounds. Trailer weight's going to go up to 10,000 pounds. As far as the installation goes, pretty straightforward installation. I do recommend a couple of jack stands to help hold our, your bumper in place, a couple of safety straps, and an extra set of hands to help lift your hitch into place. Now let's give you a few measurements to help you when deciding on any hitch mount accessories you may need, such as a bike rack, ball mount, or cargo carrier. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the outermost part of the bumper will be about two inches. From the ground to the top innermost part of the receiver tube will be about 19 inches. Now let's show you how to get this installed. Now before we actually start our installation, what we need to do, lower our spare tire. We're gonna get some jack stands. We're using these stands so we have the vehicle up in there. It makes it a little bit easier for you to see. Uh, if you're doing it on the ground, just take some jack stands. You wanna support each corner of your bumper. So we'll put one on each corner. And then what we wanna do is come inside. This bar that runs right across the back of our bumper we're actually gonna be replacing it with the hitch. So the reason we need to support the bumper is because the bolts that hold this in also hold our bumper in. You come right over here, you wanna take a strap, hook it to this back side of the bumper, and run it up. You can run it up, up towards the front of the vehicle and strap it in to where you're pulling the bumper towards the front of the vehicle. You wanna hold it up tight against the vehicle. You wanna do this on both sides. Next thing we're going to do with a 13 millimeter socket, we have our spare tire support beam here. We're going to loosen these two bolts and we're going to remove the two that are connected to this cross brace or our bumper uh, beam. Just like that. on each side of our vehicle. We're gonna have two bolts on the bottom of this, uh, the bumper bracket or bumper uh, support beam here. And we're gonna have two on the outside of the frame rim. We're gonna use a 21 millimeter socket to remove them. Now I've left one bolt in loosely on each side. Right here, we have a wiring harness that's on our bumper support beam. Take a, a plastic trim panel tool. Uh, you can use a flathead screwdriver too. We're gonna pop that off. Just like that. Now with the next set of hands, we're gonna remove our bumper support beam. Our hitch is only gonna be utilizing the two holes on the bottom of our frame rail and the two in the center for our spare tire holder. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our existing hardware that we removed and we're going to put it on the outside of our frame rail to help hold our bumper in place. Once you have removed all of your hardware on both frame rails, we're going to go ahead and remove the two bolts here that are holding up your spare tire bracket. We will not be reinstalling this. Now the next set of hands. We're going to take our hardware that we removed. The side plate is going to go up on the outside of the bumper plate on the outside of our frame rail. We're going to put one bolt in each side to help hold our hitch into place so we can get the rest of our hardware in. 
So you can see our bumper bracket that comes on the side of our frame rail. You want our hitch, or you want your hitch side plate to go in between your frame rail and that side frame rail or side plate on the hitch that's, or on the bumper itself. Once you've got your hitch in place, you're gonna line up your holes for your side frame bracket or uh, your side bumper bracket and your hitch bracket. You're gonna use existing hardware to hold that in place. Go ahead and get those in, get them tightened down a little bit, enough to where it holds your, your bumper in place. We'll tighten these down and then tighten these down the rest of the way. Once we have all our hardware tightened down, we can remove our jack stands and our safety straps and torque all of our hardware to the specifications and the instructions. Once you have all your hardware torqued down, reinstall your spare tire and you're ready to go. That'll do it for a look at an installation on the Kurt Class 3 trailer hitch receiver, part number C13176 on our 2017 Chevrolet Colorado.